my name is Rosalind Withers. I am the daughter of Dr. Ernest Withers, a photojournalist that has uh, acquired in his archive 1.8 million images approximately. And I was named by him as the trustee of my father's estate. And we founded our museum on famous Bill Street in Memphis, Tennessee. In 2011, we opened our doors as the Withers Collection Museum and Gallery. His sister bought her boyfriend a brownie camera and he didn't want it. So my father was kind of like on the background or around and he asked her if she could give him the camera since he didn't want it. And he did, she did. She gave him the brownie camera and he learned and he, I'm not sure the technique he used today would use Google, but he found out how to use that camera. And his first experience was when he was in, he was in junior high, Mava Lewis Thomas, which was Joe Lewis's wife, came to speak at the school. And she was like Holly Berry coming to a high school. It was an uh, exciting thing for all of the young people to be able to experience that. He was courageous enough to walk up close in front of the stage, not on anybody's yearbook staff or nothing like that, just courageous and took a picture. He became the most popular kid in school. <laughs> That was the bite because they were just, you got a picture of her? I want that. And it, it was a bite that made him really like that. And that was the beginning. And then later on, he learned the true process of photography in the military. He was a driver for the commander in chief and he overheard a position that was opening in the photography lab, the photo lab, and he got the courage to ask for that post because the person that <laughs> was leaving the post made him aware of it, and he asked the commander and he granted him that position, which was very substantial for him as an African-American, number one, to be given that appointment to work in the lab and to be trained. And it was significant for him because photography is expensive. It was an expensive habit, it was an expensive uh, craft. And he didn't have the means to do that, but he was trained with all of the essentials in the military who had everything. So when he came back, he knew exactly what to get. He knew you know, how to utilize his, tr his training to get the best of what he needed. And he perfected that skill. And that's what gave him his own dark room in black and white for many years. Love was really a driving force of his work. He loved the passion of his work. I mean, he was very passionate about it. And he demonstrated that in what he covered, you know. Um, I think it really was a staple for he and my mom from that perspective of love because as young people, they were entrepreneurs. And it, it was in the early 40s. You know, when my father came back from the military, his favorite sports was baseball, and he would come home in the tub. He had these different tubs that he would develop in. And after he developed them, he would take them to my mom. She'd stick them in the oven, dry them, and he'll make sure he get back the next day because when Negro League Baseball, they, they ran it kind of a week, you know, one day, then he'd... So she would count them and say, one, two, three, four. This is how much money you bring home. <laughs> so it was just an entrepreneur experience that they had, of course, not knowing back then that that was the beginning and the, the early part of, of, of that business as we know today as Ernest Withers Photography. I think the most trans, 
transformative experience that he had was covering the trial of Emmett Till. And there is really documented evidence about that. In that period of time, which was a, around 1955, he was sent there as a photographer, and he was the only photographer that was actually allowed in the courtroom, even though there were reporters there. They all looked to him for the imagery that he had recorded. He ended up taking quite a few shots inside of the courtroom, and they'd become famous, but not his name being associated with it, primarily because he sold the whole role to the Associated Press. Not sure whether it was called the Associated Press at that time, but that's how it's recorded today as the Associated Press. And now Getty Images has that in their repertoire, but they have recently given him proper credit as it being his image. So we're, we're very ecstatic for that to happen. Now, it was transformative for him because he also did something that was not ordinary for his time, is that he did a self-published book. And that book contained the trial of Emmett Till. And in the preface, at the last paragraph, he talks about why that book was so important to be published. And he describes it as an atrocity that need not to occur again. And he was publishing it so that he didn't want to stir up racial animosity, but he wanted it for the record, for people to be able to refer back to that wrong so that it wouldn't be repeated. And that to me was quite courageous for him because he did that in 1955. He was in his 30s. So, and he stated that it was not a part of any organization. It was a part of a individual project that he took on by himself. That was courageous. So he recognized the importance of his work back then in 1955. Well, I would say today there is a label that has been put on him as being an FBI informant. And that's a misconception because what we fail to realize is the importance that the FBI play in this country. And if he is approached by the FBI and questioned, it's not like he can do anything to buttle that. But the misconception is that he had intentional motives in connection with that, and that's false. You know, he was a law enforcer early on in his career as being one of the first black nine police in Memphis. So that comes with a code of conduct, which means that there's a relationship in law enforcement. And as a result, he respected that responsibility and that job. There was an FBI informant that made friends with him. And in a book that he published, my father's book called Pictures Tell the Story, on page 82, he describes that relationship. And that was done in 2000. 10 years prior to that article that was published in 2010. He passed away in 2007. So when you look at him openly expressing what that was like without all the taint that has come today and him not being here to defend himself, he states, if you read that paragraph on page 82, you could ask him, Mr. Withers, were you an FBI informant? And he says, I tried to be out of locations or rooms where real decisions were being made because there was an FBI agent by the name of Bill Lawrence. 
lurking around me to get anything that I would leak. So I stayed out of rooms and places where real decisions were being made. That clearly states that he knew what their intentions were against him and he made sure that he could always respond to them with integrity as a man. Ambassador Young shared with me something that I felt really shows the importance of his work. And he stated that because of my father's work, a lot of them are alive today. And even though, you know, he's traumatized by the loss of Martin King, but it was that front page publishing of those imageries that he would sell rolls of film to the Associated Press. Those images were found on the front pages of many papers. And as a result, lives were not taken or that was not erased as if it didn't happen. And there was a great appreciation of his work in the civil rights movement because of that. I just think that the world should really find their way to really exploring his body of work. Because what makes his work unique in his time, he was an African-American photographer with a skill set in an area that was almost taboo for his background, his upbringing, and in even his financial status. But more than anything, when you look at that scope of work, his recording of it, history is quite unique, unlike today. Today, photography, one scene has a thousand plus snaps facing it. So we can gather different snaps from all of the phones and the, all of the technology that we have today, but not in his time. He's, he's rare, he's very unique, and he's very artistic at his craft of recording our history. So take a look. I think you'll find our history in his work.